mental strength is is first and foremost. I say that's definitely the, the, the most important thing to have as a goalkeeper. Um, and then following that, obviously, you've got technically you've got to be fairly solid um, physically. Obviously, you've got to be able to cope with the demands of games week in week out. Um, you know, there's there's so much that that goes along with being a professional footballer, and then even more so for for all the intricacies of being a goalkeeper as well. Mm. Yeah, I mean, looking back at that Spain trip, I do remember it well. I think, I think we did we go there twice to Spain. Yeah, we did. Three yeah. season camp. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I think the first time we went there, you obviously you're building up your mental strength. Mm. Um, we're working hard, but I think the second time we went was a. I mean, I've spoke to you about it before in the past, but I think that was really. A massive turning point for you in your mm. career, actually. Yeah. It felt like it at the time. I remember you playing against Real Madrid. Do you remember that's you playing it. against yeah, Real Madrid? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, so Dave Penny had come in as assistant manager. Yeah. And uh, I think you'd made a few mistakes pre-season. I mean, you're only about 19, 20 at the time. Yeah. You'd made a few mistakes and Dave Penny was trying to form his opinion of you. We played against Real Madrid. And I think you made a mistake. You come for a cross, misjudged it, and they poked it in. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I don't know if I don't. Know, I think I told you, but I, I, I might as well remind you of it now. Did Dave Penny sort of come up to me after the game and said, "Tell him I'm really not sure about him. I'm, mm. I don't think he's ready." And I remember saying to him that if I was you, I'd probably have that same opinion from what you've seen. Yeah. But. I honestly believe if you put Dan in the team, yes, he will make mistakes. He's 19 years old, but by the end of the season, you'll have the best goalkeeper in League Two. And I genuinely believe that at the time. Mm. We then came back from Spain. And do you remember, do you remember we played West Ham in a pre-season friendly? Yeah. So now we're going into that game. I know Dave Penny's thinking, not sure. And I'm just thinking to myself, I didn't... I don't think I said anything to you. If I did, you know, probably <laughs> heap an extra pressure on you. But yeah. it, it was a game you needed to really come through without making a mistake. It's yeah. a funny one, really. Yeah. Because the last thing you want to do is ever go into a game thinking, i just got to get through this game without making a mistake. Because chances yeah. are you probably will make a mistake. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And do, you, do you remember that game? Do you remember anything about that game? Um, I remember Dimitri Payet stuck winning the top corner from about 20 yards. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then I think I remember, I think I made about two or three block saves late on in front of like obviously all the West Ham fans in the away end. Um, and then I think Ted came on with about five five minutes ago, didn't he? Is that right? Is that the same game? Yeah, I think that was the game. Yeah. We got the photo of you two swapping. At, that's it. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It. yeah. You being subbed and him coming on for. I think that was his, that might have even been his debut. It will be a pre-season friendly. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know if you remember early on in that game, I think a ball came over the top or it was like a deep cross and you dropped the cross and it was given offside. And, that, and it was like that moment where literally as a coach, I'm sat there thinking <laughs> the goalkeeping gods were looking down on you there because yeah. you, you came through that one moment and then mm. you had a really good game. And yeah. You kind of... It's easy to say, but you kind of never really look back after that game. But mm. then certainly the Real Madrid and West Ham game was a big moment. Probably you didn't even realise at the time, but a big moment for you. Um, and then being selected to start that season. Yeah, and I mean, that's like definitely... I can remember such like pivotal moments in, in like that period of time where I've come through things. I'm, like, I remember there was a, a reserve game away at... East, I think it was East Furrock. Um, and Graham Coughlin took the side and I kind of had a really good game and um, and and Cocker was always like really complimentary of me and really supportive of me um, and I was like kind of ever ever thankful for, for him for that but like when, when Paul Starrett was in charge he never really obviously we had Paul Smith at the time and Glenn Morris prior to that who obviously experienced, experienced pros um, so obviously for me to break through both of them was difficult. Um, obviously, Glenn moved on, and then obviously Smudge came in, and um, I know Smudge was kind of coming towards the end of his playing career anyway. Um, obviously, there's still, a, like a, from my point of view, there was a formidable opponent opponent in front of me that had played in the Premier League and the Championship um, and League One, and had played kind of like a couple of hundred games. And there's me that has played like 
think I'd come on a sub once <laughs> or twice maybe. Um, you know, so obviously from, from my point of view, when um, Phil Brown came in, that was my opportunity to go like, I need to, need to stake a claim here because if I don't and I have another season on the bench, you, you remember what I was like when I was on the bench. Yeah, you, I like, oh, yeah, I need you to were a nightmare. You were a nightmare. <laughs> a good nightmare though is it a nightmare for the yeah, it's right, the right reasons. yeah it's the right mentality to have I mean if, yeah. if if you've got someone who's happy to be on the bench you've got a problem yeah exactly exactly um, so, and, I, and I wanted that from you but as I'd always say you, you then want a response like don't just say yeah. listen I want to play yeah. show me show me in training show the manager in training um, and that's definitely something you did you just kept knocking on the door and knocking mm. on the door didn't you and eventually you got your opportunity yeah um, yeah I mean when Phil Brown came in. Obviously, I had an opportunity to to stake a claim for the shirt and um, to impress him. And I kind of remember speaking to you, and he had always made the right noises about me that I trained well and played well when I played for reserves. And um, and the the first team games that I played towards the end of of that season that we're that we're speaking about there, I think I played ten games at the end of the season that that year. Um, mm. So that was that was like a, kind of a really good opportunity for me and. Um, it was it was nice to that it fit in with Paul Stark obviously unfortunately losing his job, which obviously you don't want to happen to anybody, but um it kind of worked well with me getting an opportunity to play in the first team and Phil Brown obviously taking a hit on on he kind of took it on the chin really, didn't he? It was a bit like a I'm gonna risk playing him and if it backfires it's yeah. it's it's kind of, he, he said he was gonna take it on the chin and if I did well then obviously, you know, great it's it's great for everybody. So you now obviously it was important for me to to make sure that I repaid his faith in me and obviously all the work that you had done with me to make sure that I'd gone in and, and done done a good job, really. Yeah, well, you were prepared, weren't you? You were prepared mm. mentally, you were prepared physically, and it's one of those in goalkeeping, you, you're given an opportunity, well, not given, you've earned the opportunity, and then you've got to take it. I think yeah. whether that's a player or a member of staff, you know, you don't get very many opportunities, and you, and you certainly took it. Um, there's been so many questions over the last couple of days. People contacted me on Instagram. Um, so I've got a few questions, yep. uh, which I'll come on to a little bit later. But one of the questions talks about the, the Oxford away game, um, which it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great memory. It's one that always sticks in my mind. So do you want to tell people that aren't aware of what happened? <clears throat> what, 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 it was obviously a cup competition. Do you remember yeah. was it Johnson's paint? I don't know. Go it was John, you, yeah. you, you, you tell the story. It was Johnson's paint trophy. Um, and it was actually a year that we came second as well um, and lost the crew in the final. Oh, um, right. Wow. So, obviously, Paul Smith was in goal. Um, and I was disappointed that I didn't play the cup game anyway because I thought, you know, Johnson's paint trophy, it's a good opportunity for, for like a young lad to, to get... Um, to get an opportunity to play. Um, and then obviously the team was named and I wasn't in the team. So naturally disappointed, naturally wanted to play. Um, and then I remember, obviously it was late in the game. Um, and we were, I think it was, I think we were one nil up and then we conceded to make it one all. And Coco had joked with me about, because um, I'd, I think I'd, I'd played against Berry in the FA Cup prior to that and saved uh, saved two penalties and we went through. And then in training as well, I was like... Save them over and over again. Um, and then Coco had kind of joked like in, in the daytime saying, oh, if we go penalties, get yourself ready and like laughed and walked off. And obviously I didn't <laughs> think anything of it. Um, and then we conceded late on and Paul Stoic turned around, and I never really had a not I didn't have a bad relationship with Paul Stoic, but I never really had a relationship with Paul Stoic. Like you know, I was never I was never in the team really under him. Um, I was never I didn't really feel like I was in his plans, and you know that's that's fine. I, I had no qualms about that because I was still a young lad, and and he favoured Paul Smith, which was you know that was my responsibility to then try and get in the team. But um, Paul Paul Stoic turned around. Um, with about two minutes left. And obviously I'm not ready. I'm like not ready at all to go on. I haven't got shin pads on. I'm just sitting there kind of thinking, well, well we've got a couple <laughs> of minutes left. It's going to pens. I'm done for the day. Like I don't need to tape up or anything. I've got no tape on. And then uh, Paul started turned around and went, turned around and went <laughs> I'm not going to do a Scottish accent, but I'm sure you can imagine like Ben, you're on. I was just like, 
what on earth is going on here? Like, what do you mean? <coughs> and then 